Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today I'm giving you a bonus video on a Hungarian algorithm and maximization problems. This is part of our Networks and Decision Mathematics series for Unit 4, Year 12 General Maths in Queensland, but it's also something that can be covered in a number of other states. So if you're joining me from interstate, welcome. Now, in my previous video, we focused on minimization problems. These were, were situations where you might want to keep the cost to a minimum or the distance traveled to a minimum or the time taken to complete a process to a minimum. Now, that's wonderful, but we also need to consider maximization problems. So this would be where a business wants to make allocations of people's duties, for example, to maximize profits or sales, because we definitely don't want those to be minimized. Now, most of the textbooks don't take into consideration maximization problems. And the Queensland syllabus basically says that we only need to be able to use the Hungarian algorithm to find the optimum allocation. So we need to be able to do both. And there are some small differences between how to apply in the maximization situation. So I'm going to take you through with a five by five matrix, something a little bit more complicated today. We've got a business with five salespeople and they want to allocate those five salespeople to five different sales accounts so that each person has their own account. And that's fairly typical in the business world. Most businesses will give a account that they deal with one face to deal with rather than having five different people visit them, which can be confusing and send conflicting messages. So we want to find the best way to maximize our sales by using our five salespeople. And I've taken my hat off to my favorite show here and used some characters from The Office. I've got Jim, Dwight, Pam, Ryan and Michael. So I'm going to start in the same way that I did when I looked at a minimization problem. I'm going to start with row reduction, but instead of taking the smallest number away from everything in the row, I'm going to take the largest number. And the largest number in my first row is five. So let's subtract that from all of the values in that row. We're going to end up with either a zero or negative numbers when we do this. So I hope your skills at subtracting negative numbers is on point. Okay, let's move on to Dwight. The largest number in that row is seven. So we're going to subtract that from all the values there. With Pam, it's six. There's two sixes in the row. So we'll end up with two zeros and some negative numbers in the middle. Ryan, we've got the largest number is eight. And then Michael, the largest number is six. So now we've done our row reduction. The next step is that we're going to cover all our zeros with the smallest number of horizontal and or vertical lines. Just remember, no diagonal lines. So to do that, I'm going to pass lines through all my zeros. And the smallest number that I can do is actually going to be four. Now, this is a problem in itself. The number of lines must equal the number of accounts, but it also must be the smallest number of lines possible. The smallest number of lines possible here is four, but I need five. So I need to go again with the next step to, because I obviously haven't reached that optimum allocation just yet. So when this doesn't happen, we're going to perform column reduction. Now, if you look down your columns to find the largest number, it's zero in every column. So we actually can't do column reduction in this case. So we need to move on to the next step. The next step is to find the largest uncovered number and subtract it from all our uncovered numbers. So let's look through our matrix and we find the largest uncovered number is negative one. Now you might have been thinking to yourself, well, isn't three bigger than one? Well, neg three is bigger than one, but negative one is bigger than negative three. So be very careful here when you're using those negative numbers to think it through carefully, don't rush. Now we're going to do some negative number subtractions. Remember when you subtract a negative number, you end up turning negative negative into a positive. So here's the numbers in red that we're going to be subtracting negative one from. And when we do that, we end up with these numbers. Now you may want to pause here and just verify that for yourself. For example, in that top corner, negative three, take away negative one becomes negative three plus one. So we end up with negative two for Jim with that first business. Okay, so that was our step five. Step six, we're now going to find that largest uncovered number again, and we're going to add it to the double cross numbers. And the easy way to remember whether you've got to subtract or add is, well, if it's double crossed, it looks like a plus. So they're the ones we're going to always add to, and it's the only time we add in the Hungarian algorithm. So on the right hand side, you can see in that there are three numbers that have been double crossed. They're the shown there in red right through that middle of the matrix. So we're going to add negative one to those. Now, when we add negative one, 
plus minus one, that plus minus is the same as subtracting. So negative one, take away one, for example, for PAM in that first one there for PX, that will become negative two and so on. So now we're ready to cover those zeros yet again with the smallest number of horizontal and or vertical lines. So I could pass through here, 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 here and here. I could have done it with some vertical lines as well. But the minimum is going to be five this time. So I've now achieved my goal. The smallest number of lines that I can cover them with is now equal to the number of tasks or people or stores that I need to allocate to. So now we've found our optimum allocation. So let's bring back our original matrix. We now need to work out who to give what task to, which count to. So the first thing I would do is to look down your list and look along the rows for a salesperson who only has one zero in their row. And if we look at Jim's row, there's two zeros there. That means there's two stores we could allocate to. Dwight's got two, Pam's got two. Ryan is the only salesperson who has one zero in his row. So that means that the optimum allocation for Ryan is to sell to Paperworks. Now, if we look at all the other salespeople, they've all got two zeros. That means there's two possibilities. So the next thing I would do is look down the columns. So if we look down the Pencils Incorporated column, for example, we'll find that there's only one person there who should be selling to that store, and that's Pam. So that's the optimum allocation for that store. Let's look down the Paper Express column now. Well, there's only one zero there, and that's with Michael. So he's the best person to sell to Paper Express. If we look now down to Stationery is Us, We've only got one zero there as well, and that's Jim. So that means Jim's been allocated. Now, if we look down at our last column, Fax Corp, we've actually got four people with a zero there that we could choose from. However, three of those people have already been allocated a role. So that leaves us with just Dwight, who hasn't been allocated, and Fax Corp hasn't been allocated either. So that process of elimination will tell us that the very last person who gets an account is Dwight and that's going to be Fax Corp. I could also represent this information by using a bipartite graph at the end. And it's always a good idea to know how to take that matrix back to a bipartite graph in case you're asked to draw one. And this is now showing that optimum allocation between salespeople and stores. We could also use the information on the bipartite graph to work out what the maximum profit is that's going to be made by this business with this combination. The maximum profit that could be made from this combination is $31,000 and that's found by adding the sum of all of those different people's results together. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you. Best of luck with those external exams. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you've got any questions. Like and subscribe to the channel and please tell your friends. Have a lovely day.